In today's news, Ford's F-150 electric truck gets detailed with availability, range, and its new Korean battery supplier. The next BRZ N86 seem to get a launch window, and Kia does what I think could be the lamest stunt ever for the Emmys. And before we get in the thick of it, please make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon. Turn on notifications so you won't miss any breaking news or reviews. <laughs> Over automotive news, Ford says F-150 EV will outwork the competition. That's a stout claim. They're claiming that the F-150 electric will cost 40% less to operate than the current gasoline model, of course. Not a whole lot of maintenance on an electric vehicle. And yeah, the fuel savings would be ridiculous. So incoming CEO Jim Farley said last week at an event celebrating the construction of a facility in Michigan to build the F-150 EV starting in 2022. He says it's a workhorse and not a show horse. Maybe he's putting jabs on the Hummer and the Cybertruck with their a little outlandish styling. I do like the Rivian styling quite a bit. That, so far, that's my favorite styling for an electric vehicle or electric truck. F-150 EV powered by dual electric motors. Of course, that comes as no surprise. Doesn't mention the option of a triple motor that we know that the Cybertruck is gonna have. Well, all we know that it's gonna be the, by far the most powerful truck that the F-150 lineup has ever had, which is not gonna be hard to do with electric motors to surpass this 450 and 510 pound-feet of torque. In place of the engine, because it's not reinventing the wheel here, they they're producing this truck in one plant, shipping it to the other plant, this brand new plant that he's talking about there to, to stick in the electrical components. But yeah, it's the same frame and they're just going to plop out that engine and now you're going to have the world's largest frunk is what they're calling it. A lot of junk in the front. So these F-150s would go through the same paint and body shops as the gas powered models before moving to the new building like I kind of mentioned earlier. But over here at Korean Times, guys, this is where we get the juicy bits about this new truck. SK Innovation seeks double digit market share in EV battery. Now I had just posted a, a news update that uh, the Hyundai, the Kias, uh, Genesis, I thought they were working with LG Chem, and they might be to a little extent, but they have been working with SK Innovation. They just announced a big deal, and now we get an update with Ford and SKI. So by 2025, they believe that they'll be a top three battery supplier. SKI said it will raise its share to double digits in 2025 by capitalizing on its expertise in NCM. NCM refers to nickel cobalt manganese. So the company has been focusing on mass producing NCM 622 batteries. That means 60% nickel, 20% cobalt, and 20% manganese since 2012. The batteries will power the F-150 electric pickup truck, which is set for release the same year and are expected to offer a driving range of over 700 kilometers, which is about 435 miles, and a short charging time. And this F-150 is going to be using a new NCM chemistry containing 90% nickel, 5% cobalt, and 5% manganese with a plan to mass produce batteries in 2023. Well, they just said that the Ford uh, Electric will start production in 2022. So, Kind of in that late 2022 time frame is when I expect these things to start being manufactured and then these batteries are gonna be mass produced the year after. Doesn't mean they're not gonna be available in 2022. I think they're gonna be available in kind of like a short supply. They're not gonna be producing a ton of these F-150s, so probably just 2023, 2024, where they can mass produce these NCM 911 batteries. And so from 2019 to 2025, SKI says its manufacturing capacity will expand from 5 gigawatt hours to 100 gigawatt hours during the same time period. So they're going to be providing batteries, like I said, for Hyundai, all the Korean automakers, possibly some more domestic automakers here in the United States, and then of course Ford with the electric truck, and possibly some other electric options as well, like the Ford Mach-E. So the good news is SKI has battery manu manufacturing plants in Korea and the United States, Hungary and China. So a 9.8 gigawatt hour plant started uh, construction last year in Georgia, and also decided earlier this year to build an 11.7 gigawatt hour plant there as well. So the first plant will be completed in the second half of next year, began a commercial operation in 2022. There you have it. Maybe that's when they can start just moving these batteries from Georgia to Michigan to put in the F-150 electric. And then construction of plant two began in July with a plan to launch commercial operations 2023. Things are rolling, guys. Over at Cars Guide, an Australian website, new Subaru BRZ 2021 coming earlier than expected when the Toyota 86 Twin will go on sale has been revealed. 
Cars Guide understands that BRZ is currently scheduled to enter Australian showrooms in the fourth quarter of 2021, with the 8.6 likely to be released locally around the same time. Now that's for the Australian market, and they're gonna be producing these vehicles in Japan. But according to the dealer leak or dealer, yeah, the dealer leak we got this past spring, we were expecting it to come in the summer of 2021. Well, then COVID happened, so it's probably quite likely that it's gonna happen in Q4 of 2021. And here in the United States, I expect it to probably launch around the same time. I don't see why, any reason why it wouldn't. Now, no other information has been, I guess, revealed to us in this article. Still the rumored 2.4 liter boxer engine with around 220 horsepower or so. Uh, we haven't seen a naturally aspirated version of it yet. We've only seen the turbocharged versions of it and like the Subaru Synth, the Outback, uh, the Legacy. And we still don't know what platform is gonna be on. I'm gonna say that they're gonna keep it on the same platform, just change the bumpers, things like that. Kind of like the Nissan 400Z or whatever they decide to call it, is gonna be based off the current Z370Z's platform, which there can still be a lot done to make these platforms better. So, so back to automotive news, Hyundai wants to restart facility upgrades Dealers wary. Executives at Hyundai Motor America say they feel the company's retail sales have rebounded from the coronavirus crisis thanks to the aggressive factory uh, promotions and hard work by dealers. Now it's time to move forward. So these upgrades are critical to the automotive uh, automaker's next step, raising customer scores for sales and service, which are among the worst in the US industry. So dealers say these facility upgrades can cost hundreds of thousands to millions of dollars depending on their scale. Hyundai is moving from its classic blue box design to a bronze theme based on its global dealership space identity program. Genesis wants to separate its identity at Hyundai stores with separate showrooms and service areas. In bigger markets, Genesis wants, to st wants standalone dealerships that could cost several million dollars. So last week I spoke about how Cadillac uh, is forcing their dealerships to upgrade their, I guess, infrastructure in order for them to sell electric cars. That was about, they're guessing about $200,000 to upgrade each dealership on average to be able to support Cadillac's electric vision. Now, this seems like a much, much bigger undertaking because every single uh, Hyundai and Kia, Kia dealership, every single Hyundai dealership for sure, has to have new service bays, new, showroom floors that are segmented away from the Hyundai. I have no idea how that's gonna work. It sounds like a very, very difficult undertaking. They're asking a ton of these Hyundai dealerships to be able to do something like that, and let alone different service bays or I guess entrances for just the Genesis lineup. And then they have separate separate service representatives just for the Genesis customers. And maybe not, maybe not separate like um, technicians for the Genesis cars. I would assume that they would be all be able to service by the same technicians, but isn't that crazy, guys? Holy cow, it would be, it's gonna be very interesting to see. And they're getting a lot of pushback. So it's gonna be so interesting to see how this all works out for Hyundai, Kia, and Genesis to do these you know, upgrades when the coronavirus still is kind of lingering. Or at least the effects of it are lingering for sure. Over at Best Car Web, a Japanese scoop site, the current Mirai is discontinued and the next model will be crown-based and will be released December. And we knew that the Mirai was coming this year. I had no idea that the current Mirai was still on sale. This, the sales have completely dr just dropped. They're, they said that they're averaging about 20 sales per month. That's here in the United States for the past few months. Now the new Mirai looks great, there's no doubt. And I'm excited for it and I hope to get to drive it and share my impressions with you guys one day. I'm gonna have to leave Nebraska because there is no infrastructure. If I look at these hydrogen fueling stations in America, there's about 40 here in the United States, uh, one on the East Coast and the rest of them in California. There's a few in British Columbia and one in Quebec City. And they want to bring this vehicle here to the United States. Yeah, it's based off the Toyota Crown, which is an amazing vehicle. We also didn't get here, but the Lexus GS, I'm never gonna let this down, guys. The Lexus GS got canceled. And my guess is in favor for the Mirai. I just don't, I just don't understand it. Hydrogen has a place in the future and Japan and parts of Asia are going hard with hydrogen. Germany, I hear, is going really, really strong with hydrogen. But here in the United States, I mean, you gotta have a product for these gas stations to, to even want to put in hydrogen. So it's kind of a catch-22. They gotta offer the product so they can have the infrastructure, but they can't have the infrastructure without the product. So yeah, I don't know, guys. 
I get fired about hydrogen fuel cells. I think they're wonderful, but yeah, no infrastructure makes them pointless. Over at Insurify, on-road zoomers, car models with the most speeding tickets. I got a kick out of this one, so I'll just zoom down here. Car models with the most speeding tickets. Big surprise, the Subaru WRX coming in at 20.49% of Subaru WRX drivers have a speeding ticket on their record. That is double the national average. Du national average, this is not a good graph. I'll put on my graph that I think is a little bit more rep uh, representative because 10% looks like 1% down here. But national average is about 10% of people out there on the roads have a speeding ticket. And if you have a WRX, you're two times more likely to have a speeding ticket. Does that surprise anyone? Absolutely not. And this, the rest of the cars on this list don't surprise me either. Volkswagen GTI, second. Impreza, another Subaru, okay. G37, it's coming in strong, those used cars, right? Dodge Dart, do they even still make the Dart? Gosh, that thing's, a, that thing's a work of art, but I mean, it really must be fast if it's on this lineup. Hyundai Veloster is only Korean vehicle on this list. Dodge Challenger, comes as no surprise. Dodge Ram 2500, and I thought about this, I'm like, this is a heavy duty pickup truck, why is this? Because these diesel trucks, they like to race, they like to modify them. The 2500 knows the 1500 is not hidden here. Yeah, you can still speed with a big Hemi in the 1500, but the Ram 2500, you get that Cummins diesel. People want to roll coal on others, and that's why this is in there. With the rolling coal, all that smoke goes up in the air. It's like a signal. It's a smoke signal for the cops to pull them over. Dodge Charger, uh, oh, not a surprise. I saw a Dodge Charger speeding yesterday, chirping, chirping ru rubber at a red light. Um, so at a stoplight, I should say. And then Nissan 350Z, another used car. Man, these used, these used Nissan products coming in. Kids just can't hold back those V6s, you know. And over at Motor One, watch a Kia K5 land a flat spin, 360 degree jump between two ramps. So this is a part of Kia's investment in the 72nd Emmys Award telecast. I mean, I'm sure all those people at the Emmys are gonna be so excited. I'm gonna fast forward it right here. How amazing. There it is, guys. There it is. Nailed the stunt. Stunt driver, I mean, he's got some balls to do that. Guys, does that get you more excited to buy a Kia K5, the replacement of the burning Optima. I don't know. I just feel like something like that could have been better at like a sporting event, but the Emmys, why would you do something like that at Emmy? I just, I don't know, I don't get it. But guys, lots of news today, and I am branching out a little bit to the American brands when I feel like one, it's super exciting, and two, especially when it has implications for electrification and like today's news when that electrification includes an Asian brand. But yeah, my focus is still uh, Korean and Japanese autos. It'll always be definitely focused a little bit more on the Asian automakers. But if you guys uh, like me, if you like the channel, definitely check out my live stream tomorrow. I'm gonna be live streaming Battery Day. You guys have been asking for it. I will be live streaming the unveil of the GMC Hummer. Um, and eventually whenever we get the unveil of this uh, electric F-150, which probably won't be for a while since 2022 is when they're manufacturing it. So it'll be interesting. I thank you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully I'll see you in the live stream tomorrow at battery day. Uh, bring your snacks and drinks. You know, most of the live streams are going to be like worshiping, uh, Tesla. I'll be doing my best to bring it down to earth. Keep it a little grounded. Unlike most of the other channels that will just be rocketing off to space with Elon Musk rocket. So I'm not a Tesla hater. I respect them. There's a reason I'm, I'm streaming it because they are a huge player in the race for electrification and future mobility and sustainability in some ways. So thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the comments as always. If you haven't hit the like button, go ahead and do that. I'll see you guys in the next video in the stream tomorrow as well. Take care of yourselves and peace out.